What is going on, everybody? My name is Zell Prince, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Today, I got another Fallout related video for you guys. God, it's been so long since I've actually done a Fallout video. I just realized it as I was just doing an intro for you guys. It's been almost three, over three years now since I last did a Fallout reaction. The last one I did was, I think, uh, reaction video number 55, right before uh, Mitch moved. I was recording a lot of videos because I shared the computer with him when he, when, before he moved to make my videos. Uh, and so I was just pumping out whatever videos I could get ready for, um, for, a, long, for a while so I can get my uh, computer set up, prepped, and get out those videos. And I just realized how long it's been since I've done any kind of videos related to Fallout in general. Not Fallout 76, but just Fallout in general. Even though uh, Mitchell gave me Fallout 4, I just find myself every now and then getting into Fallout. But um, enough of that. We're going to be reacting to Internet Historian. Yes, the Internet Historian who has been making a lot of videos lately. And I just recently got into his videos because I also watched his uh, uh, Costa Concordia video, which I actually remember happening as a kid. I saw it on the news and I remember only seeing a picture of, you know, Costa Concordia itself on its side as a kid. And I was in middle school when that happened. It was in my first year. So... Sadly, I did not react to that video, but I'm going to be reacting to some of his other stuff, such as today's video. This is the fall of 76. If you don't know what 76 is, it's referring to Fallout 76 and why the game failed at launch. I know why it, cr it failed at launch, but I don't know the extent of how bad it was. I just knew it was just a bunch of bugs and glitches and the game wasn't sufficiently powerful enough to run online multiplayer, so... So we're going to get right into today's video and see as for the reason, the full extent why Fallout 76 had failed. So we're going to get right into today's video in three, two, one, go. Ah. Best of ruins. <laughs> I got to finish playing Fallout 4. If you found this tape, it means that everyone is dead. Or working at a different office. How did this happen? Well, I'll tell you. Buckle up, buckaroos. Today's lesson is the misfired launch of Fallout 76. June 2018. It began with everyone getting just a little hyped up. Have we waited long enough, guys? Oh, God, yes, we have, Todd. I think we have. Fallout 76, Bethesda's biggest game yet. My god, it was exciting. And they promised we'd know more at E3. E3 hype time. The press conference. 16 times the detail. 16 times the detail. All new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. Four times the map size. Okay, he's not impressed. Four times the size of Fallout 4. And it's our biggest one yet. My god, it was exciting. And then it failed on November launch. November 14th, 2018. The game goes live with a day one patch of 50 gigabytes. Oh my god. For fuck's sake, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> but once that's downloaded, <laughs> you can start logging into the hellscape that is Fallout 76. And oh dear lord, they never fix the bugs. Um. And there are so many of them. Goodbye world, goodbye necks, goodbye oh my body, God. goodbye heads, I knew it was bad, bugs, but I didn't realize bugs, it was this bad. Everywhere. Server crashes, game crashes, ah. old bugs imported from Fallout 4. Use more than one nuke at a time, uh. server's dead. Texture's far too texturous, an all-consuming void. Airlock 307. Can't pick up stuff, can't stop asserting dominance with a T-pose. Frame rate problems, screen tear problems, getting too swole, getting underneath the map, getting attacked by invisible enemies, spawning too many enemies. It kind of speaks for itself. Spawning too many god rays. Also, your camp resets after every session, and sometimes it goes underwater. Holotapes randomly play static, but too many holotapes mean none of them will play. Enemy AI is far more A than I. Animations are broken. Surprise. Floating objects and a traveling merchant. Oh my god. Just to name a few. 
Joseph Anderson has a great video that documents just the ones that he found personally. That video I is I never three realized out. it was this bad. I knew it was bad when it launched and nobody started playing the game, but I didn't know the full extent of how bad it truly was. Holy shit. It was long. Um, but it gets worse. Error CE348780 can corrupt your data and force you to reinstall the game and console operating system. A few PC players had their computers brick entirely. Also, when the date rolled over to the 1st of January 2019, um, the nukes in the game stopped working altogether. No one thought it prudent to program in other years in an always online game. And a few players were straight up logging into other people's accounts. This guy had a level 78 character that was randomly replaced with a level 8 character. Bethesda said they couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> oh my and many players God. are not thrilled with this game, and they want Bethesda to know that. And they want everyone else to know that too. But Bethesda owns the platform. Is Fallout 76 fun? Yes it is. Banned for racism. Thread locked. They had no direct outlet for their rage. The only solution was to put a torch to everything else. Reddit. Twitter. <coughs> the shit other out of me. on Steam. The backlash was immense. But surely level heads would prevail. The reviewers would come out and say that the game isn't so bad. Oh dear lord, they hate it. Oh my god. This is so sad. Despacito, play Country Roads. Okay. Almost heaven, <laughs> West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. And the YouTube community oh my God. has to say, it's really fucking boring. I could barely bring myself to play it in order to finish this review. No one on staff wants to play any more of this video game. I'm not gonna subject myself to another 20, 30 hours of this fucking mess. In short, Fallout 76 it was a is morally, disaster, technically, and creatively man. bankrupt. It's the just... mods on Bethesda forums were working overtime. The mods on Reddit almost gave up. Look, I'm not saying that some people didn't enjoy and have fun with this game. But what I am saying is that the Metacritic was really funny to read. So what happened? Well, it came and out... Why did the game huge have... Rough. The deadlines were... Oh, wait, wait, hold on. So what happened? Well, it came out that development was hugely rushed. That's why. I thought it was like a couple of years of work, but apparently not. The deadlines were tight. Too tight. <laughs> plus, 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 wait, what did it say? The deadlines were tight. Too tight. Her shoes are a size too small, obviously. <laughs> plus, okay. this wasn't Bethesda's A team. It's actually a relatively inexperienced division based in Austin, and the scope mm. of the game kept getting bigger. We're gonna need distant weather systems. Hey Todd, I stayed up all night and I just We're finished- We're gonna need 16 times the detail. Please. Todd. No more. We're gonna need four times the size of Fallout 4. That and they were trying to patchwork the old Bethesda creation engine into a <laughs> multiplayer framework. What else could you expect? That's it was I highly rushed. Fallout 76. <laughs> now, Ow. Bethesda could tolerate the bugs and the bad reviews and the irate players, but what they couldn't tolerate were the exploits. Um, exploits. Infinite inventory, infinite invisibility. The frame rate was tied to the game speed, so people were going a lot faster than they should. Server hopping for more items, infinite cash and infinite duplication, unlimited XP, unlimited nuking. The nuclear codes were unencrypted and you could wall clip into the quest room. And someone was given the curse of infinite invincibility. Naturally, this can really mess with other players' online experience. So Bethesda was ready, with the ban hammer, this just and a blindfold to wildly flail around and take down anyone who happened by. But Bethesda wasn't satisfied with just banning people. No, they're a progressive company with big ideas. They wanted to give a road to redemption. So support sent out this email to players caught cheating. We would be willing to accept an essay on why the use of third-party cheat software is detrimental to an online game community. That's right, 500 words on why you're a very naughty boy, and they may just give you your account back. But a couple of days later, the mocking from news outlets caused them to reconsider this approach. 
one more exploit. In all the Bethesda games, there's a dev room. Every item in the game is kept here. Security has to be top notch because otherwise, someone could just waltz in and take all of the best items in the game and it would be an absolute disaster. Well, oh shit. my god. Of course, Bethesda wasn't equipped to deal with the issue. People started flooding in, taking the best items in the game, then selling those items on a black market of sorts. At first, they tried the usual approach. Banning people <laughs> who had some of the best items in the game. You spent 700 hours just to get the best gun? Die, cheater! <laughs> Next, they put in a system where players would get tagged if they ever entered the room. And they banned those players. That wasn't much better because people would just start using Smurf accounts. Get in quick with a level 1 account. Get all that good shit. Then get the fuck out. Then use a duplication glitch to get a ton more of those items. Then transfer that stuff to your main account and you're good to go. Bethesda Holy then takes crap. out this level 1 and calls it mission accomplished. And you've just beaten the game. So the problem continued. Bethesda is running out of ideas to solve it. There's a lot of speculation in the media and among players about how exactly people are getting in, but no one except for the exploiters knows for sure. That said, Bethesda needs to act fast before it ruins the economy of the game. So they wrote another email and sent it out to the Smurf. <laughs> I just can't believe it's as bad as Battlefield 2042. Was this worse than Battlefield 2042? Because I knew that game had so many bugs and glitches that it botched that launch faster than, uh, what was the other, uh, besides Halo Infinite? Halo Infinite took longer to, um, well, well, fail, but I still quite, I still quite enjoyed that game, by the way. Just not the multiplayer aspect of it. Um, but what was the other game that, Vanguard, there we go, that Vanguard was also coming out at the same time yeah so battlefield 2042 botched faster than vanguard and infinite combined but 76 was worse it seems let me know in the comment section which one was worse 76 or battlefield 2042 um, uh, hello cheetah do you want to tell us how you did it and we might unban you please oh my god not hear back from you the account will simply remain suspended it's not known whether this approach worked, but from what I've seen, it's still possible to get into the dev room. This counts. November 22nd, 2018. Just a week after the release, the game goes on discount. From 60 to $40. To 35 To 30 You can find it for 15 on eBay, and in Germany, they're straight up giving it for free when you buy a PlayStation controller. Also, really? some stores are just zip-tying it to other products. But to Bethesda, it's worth selling the thing at a price close to zero. Because it brings people into the Atomic Shop, which is where the real margins are. And it inflates the poor sales figures. Let's have a look at those. The latest figures show 76 sold less than a sixth of what Fallout 4 did. Wow! Not good. There's also been a massive oversupply of hard copies. Although, what's the point of a hard copy when the thing is just a cardboard disc telling you to redeem an online code? What? And while sales are low, returns are high. Immediately upon release, people began asking Bethesda for a refund. 76 is not on Steam, it's on Bethesda's own platform. So they have all the control. If players only played the game for a few hours, then generally they'd get their money back. However, it came out that people were sometimes getting refunds after a full 24 hours of play. Quite generous. But then word about this spread to forums. Then to Reddit, and a post got 12,500 upvotes informing people that this made pretty much everyone eligible for a refund, and the comments told them exactly how to do it. Bethesda was flooded with requests for refunds. And their response? <laughs> Shut it down, lads. No. No. No one gets a refund now. Everyone go home. Show's over. Robot customer service man, engage. Customers who have downloaded the game are not eligible for a refund. We apologize for the inconvenience. Die. <laughs> a few things followed. First, people got mad. One hardcore gamer even trashed a GameStop for refusing his refund. Jesus Christ. Thank you for playing GameStop. This is Brian. How can I help you? A bit of an overreaction. Oh, yeah, the just about. The fake. Second, the media. 
Oh my god, the media loves ripping into into stories. <laughs> and third, a class action lawsuit. Their inconsistent refund policy and terms of service may not be strictly legal. November uh, 27, 2018. Miglachio and Rathod LLP filed a class action suit on behalf of customers. Media quickly picked up on that. Their main argument is God, that it's a sum. Didn't it took less than a month for everything to go downhill so quickly? Times unplayable. Game I mean, we're talking game. lawsuits, refunds. Um, backlash, I immense, immediate backlash. It's technical problems. Then they're refusing refunds, and that Bethesda is engaged in a strategy to release it anyway, and then slowly patch their way into a more playable state. Updates on this lawsuit are slow, so I'll keep you informed on the second channel. Hmm. Ad time. Oh, here Look, comes his ads. There's a meteor oh, headed Smith. straight to Earth. Oh my God. We must do something. Was anyone curious enough to read about it online? Not me. Not me either. Nope. Oh no! Now people think I'm dumb and I have died a virgin. Don't let this happen to you. Get Curiosity Street. It's a streaming platform with some of the best documentaries okay. and non-fiction from around the world. Partial nudity? Maybe if you look Partial hard enough. Partial nudity. But more importantly, <laughs> the most arousing thing of all. Knowledge. Works for your Roku, Android, etc, etc. It works on everything, okay? Science, nature, history, tech, society. CuriosityStream.com slash Internet Historian for unlimited access to the world's free top documentaries and non-fiction series. Use the promo code Internet Historian during the sign-up process to get the first 30 days free then cancelled any time. Wink. Pl mm. Please. Look, I need I need sponsors. I, I bought a lifetime supply of toilet paper thinking I was saving money, but then I left it out in the rain and the crows got it. And now I'm back to square one. Please. <laughs> Curiosity. How long ago did this video come out? Hold on, I just want to see something. Okay. Okay, so this video is a lot older than I thought it was. I thought it was much more recent because I saw it pop up in my recommended. It came out less than a, a year after Fallout 76 came out, so it was pretty fresh and new at the time. Makes sense. Slash internet story. Ads over. Because I know a lot more has Let's happened since then. Bit. Fallout fans made their pre-orders, and the most dedicated pre-ordered the Power Armor Edition. Wow. It came with a helmet, box, map, army toys, and a genuine West Tech canvas bag. Fast forward to the release, and customers noticed that their precious bags, which are supposed to be made of the finest canvas and land, Ooh, yummy. look a bit different. Bruh. In fact, it looks like a carry bag the real bag should come in. Bruh. Do they really just advertise one thing and deliver another? can't do that. So there was a surge of backlash, and people began emailing Bethesda, asking for refunds, asking for answers. By this point, customer service is absolutely over it. They are done with the facade, and they send this email in response. Hello. We are sorry that you aren't happy with the bag. The bag shown in the media was a prototype and was too expensive to make. We aren't oh planning on doing anything about God. it. Oh my God. That's the whole email. Staff at Bethesda aren't even hiding their contempt anymore. Naturally, the internet goes wild. Are you fucking kidding me? Wow. Wow. Well, I got so mad, I shaved everything off my face. Okay, guys, this is a bit of a PR nightmare. We have to quell the outrage. What do we do? Well, we've got this in-game currency. Let's just give them the minimum amount of that. Fantastic idea. Hear you, hear you. It went wrong. Anyone who paid Didn't it? two to three hundred dollars for the Power Armor Edition is hereby entitled to five dollars worth of in-game currency that you'll be able to spend with us. Five hundred atoms? Fuck yeah! What are you gonna do with your atoms? I'm gonna buy five eighteenths of the white paint version of the Power Armor. Whoa! What about you? Light wood laminate. Light wood laminate. Light wood laminate. <gasps> Fuck the bag! He's right! Fuck the bag! Lemonade, it didn't work, did it? Of course, 
This was Bethesda's fantasy of what would happen. What really happened is further outrage, and even the media started piling on. Almost heaven. Where's Virgin? It even became part of that class action lawsuit from earlier. Bethesda wow. put out a tweet apologizing for their curt customer service and gave a different excuse for why they didn't make the bags. A shortage of material, apparently. That was quickly debunked. Because it turns out they did make the canvas bag. Except they gave them all out to influencers. Oh dear. It's not the same one, of course. But it's sourced from that Ooh. ever scarce material, canvas. But what's more amusing is that it turns out there is a canvas bag in the game. If you don the postman's outfit, which of course can be found at the atom shop, for 700 atoms. Ooh, just short. Well, the bleating from the online community Quaid. continued, I'll and Bethesda's lawyers realized there would be trouble, so they decided to capitulate. All right, fine. We'll make your precious fucking bag. If you want to claim it, you'll have to fill out this form with your name, personal details, address, etc., etc., and we'll ship out the bag to you in four to six months. But it doesn't quite end there. Because Bethesda is known for bugs, and of course their website is a buggy mess too. Mm. It turns out all of the customer support inquiries are unsecure and open to the public. In fact, people can open and close and change them at will. Listed are details of full legal names, phone numbers, home addresses, and more. If you've requested your canvas bag, you've just been doxxed. Oh my... Not knowing how to Lord. immediately fix the problem, Bethesda panics and temporarily shuts down the whole website. And that is the tale of the duffel kerfuffle. How could this have been so difficult? They made one for New Vegas. One last piece of merch, a rum drink. Nuka Cola Dark. Pre-orders available in September. Shipped out on November 14th. $80 plus postage and handling. Not cheap, but in return you got a very cool bootle. Looks good on the shelf. A great conversation piece. Was it good actually? Thanksgiving. Or at least it would have been. November 14th came and went and there was no rum. Uh, okay. A week later on November 21st, an email comes through. There's a delay. Things aren't up to the usual fallout standard, they say. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta close my shade a little bit. The usual fallout standard. Yeah. Too much light's coming in. I can't I see the screen. Just, there we go. Things aren't up to the usual fallout standard. So we'll have it for you soon. No specific date given. One week later. Nothing. Then on December 5th, another email. Good news. We start shipping on December 12th. It's been nearly three months since you pre-ordered, but as a show of good faith, we made this promotional video for you. And this is where things went from tardy to retardy. Right there. Did you catch that? That's just a regular industry bottle and a plastic shell. We paid $80 and waited a quarter of a year for a plastic shell? Oh People my lord. Happy. Look at that ratio. Nothing in the marketing said that it was a plastic shell. Super premium, we were promised. And the media agreed. Well, it was just... It was just... Everything was just bad from launch. From the, just from the announcement day alone. Everything went wrong. Oh my... How did this game People even get past screening? Silver Screen tries to convince people that it's not cheap and shitty. It actually costs us twice as much to make the plastic one than the glass one. Then what the fuck? We, we spent a hundred hours coding the design. Convincing stuff. So it arrives, just a few days before Christmas. The rum is about the quality you'd expect. Can I swear on this? It's my own show. <laughs> Worse is the design. The oversized lip means liquid can pour inside the shell. Hard to pour because how they made this damn thing. I spilled like half the shot. Very dribbly. So you're best off opening the whole thing up to prevent spilling. If you do that, there's a good chance that you'll snap the flimsy plastic. Any liquid will immediately ruin this cheap paper sticker. Some made their own at home and the quality was about on par. But look, if you do want a decent version of this product, there are reputable sellers of them. 
They're on Etsy. Huh. They're far cheaper, and they actually give a shit. Not gonna lie, though, <laughs> some of the memes that came out of this were pretty good. <laughs> now, many claim that this was an honest mistake. Sorry. Or that customers were at fault for misinterpreting ambiguous marketing. I disagree. All of the marketing shows other glass items. All of the mock-ups show something more akin to frosted glass than plastic. They give plenty of descriptions of the product too, and not once do they mention plastic. And they were engaged in a bunch of other tomfuckery as well. Before the product <laughs> was even available, Christ. they flooded their own product reviews with a bunch of five stars. This raised some eyebrows, and people on Reddit even called them out for it. So they deleted them. You can see all this activity on the Wayback Machine. Now, if they're happy to deceive people in this way, it seems silly to give them the benefit of the doubt about the glass. It's also worth quickly talking about the Bethesda merch store. Merch store. Some of these items are pretty neat. That's cool. Good idea. I'd have that. Fallout 76 pant. Singular. But why is pant. he so mad? The photography is all just slightly... off. This gaudy jacket was mocked relentlessly on social media. But does the 76 in $276 really make it more immersive? And why did they just toss it on the ground? And it comes in this crumpled up toddler body bag. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in merch and you don't have an iron? Why is she wearing the size XXL? She's clearly not happy about it. But who looked at this and said, good job, print? Now that's surprising. And what the fuck? They made the bottle properly. Yeah, one of those, please. But bigger and brown. Is that so hard? Let's get back to the game. December oh 2018. There are two new patches released that caused quite a stir. The good. For PC, they included a number of quality of life improvements, including push to talk. but also brought in field of view sliders. Hooray! Increased stash capacity from 400 pounds to 600 pounds, and a small buff to automatic weapons. Hooray! They decreased the carry weight of bobby pins so it no longer took up 10 to 20% of people's inventory. I got a box of bobby pins the other week that said, that said, weigh these. <laughs> <laughs> there were also upgrades to the camp that allowed for easier construction, and a bunch of bug fixes. Hooray. The bad. A whole bunch of unannounced stealth nerfs. They generally made the game grindier. Emo production was decreased. Fusion cores burnt out faster. Legendary enemies spawned less frequently. On guard, I'll fuck you up. And the backlash was significant because everybody knew why Bethesda was doing it. To encourage people to use the atomic shop. Really? And let's talk briefly about that story. The emote scandal? Some of the prices are outrageous. A Christmas tree for $12. A Santa outfit for $20. Blue and yellow paint for $18. Oh look, $3 for the same sweater vest and slacks item imported from Fallout 4. But the biggest offense of all was the holiday emote bundle. $24 for some Christmas themed emotes. Twice the price of these games. The media agreed that these were egregious prices. But worse, they're engaged in some deceiving marketing practices too. Oh look, it's marked down half price. But it's not. It was released half price. They're artificially jacking up the price, only to then give it a fake limited time discount in order to create a sense of urgency. That's illegal, here in Australia at least, in Canada and in the EU. Reddit quickly picked up on this and pointed it out. Bethesda reacted by scrapping the discount and just setting it as the always intended price. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes of whining now, so I'm just going to leave it here. I didn't wow. even get a chance to touch on the new pay to win fiasco. The new camera item that lets you teleport, dwindling player numbers. But on the flip side, they're also adding new content and improving the game over time. Heck, No Man's Sky was a surprising comeback. So, no Man's maybe Sky. Bethesda can do it too. Just but for now, Todd returns to cryostasis. Hiding in his Occupy bunker until the bombs of outrage Your stop falling. Proceed and returning only when it's time. 
to get our hopes up once again. Curiositystream.com slash into- Okay. I did not realize how significantly bad the whole situation was for for Fallout 76. I knew it was bad, but I didn't know it brought in like lawsuits, um, false merchandising. I just knew that the game was bad and that was it. And I, I knew it was bad for my brother. Like he, I know he played, tried to play it. Him and a couple friends tried to play it, and it was just botched. It was just blown to hell and everything. Uh, I did not know about any of this. Uh, how did I? How did I not look into this more? <laughs> I was just getting into Fallout around that around 2018 anyway. I'm surprised. I ha Is the game still good? It. I'm sorry. It, no, I shouldn't be saying that. I should just be saying, are people still playing it? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> well, at least now I'm completely caught up to speed with, well, at least in terms of this video, I'm caught up with everything that happened in Fallout 76. Um, I've got to go back to finish playing Fallout 4 and possibly someday buy Fallout New Vegas because that's what got me fully intrigued and back into fall into trying out Fallout. Uh, before I do, I gotta ask you guys in the comment section about something. On PC, is it easier to play Fallout 4 with a controller or with the mouse and keyboard? Because I seem to be having a lot more trouble playing it with a mouse and keyboard. Uh, so please let me know in the comment section below if you guys are intrigued by anything else I want to you want me to react to in the future. Uh, let me know, and I'll get to it as soon as possible. But, but with that being said, that's it in terms of today's recordings. I'm going to be recording a lot more now that I'm feeling a lot better. A picture of the fixator should have appeared on in my channel community tab there, because now that it's off, I could show you what it looked like and what it what was on my leg this whole time because I wasn't going to show it while the thing was literally pinned into my leg because <laughs> I don't want YouTube taking my channel down. So yeah, so that's everything. I'm going to continue making videos now and soon, probably maybe halfway into February. I don't know. I'll start making let's play videos on Wally -E and whatever else comes up next. So please look forward to that. And with that being said, hopefully I'll see you, not hopefully, I will see you in the next video. Bye.